The image of Leda and the Swan, which we see in this drawing by Leonardo, is a little unusual. It's sort of on the fringe of pornography, and yet it's incredibly beautiful. The world's greatest collectors are not only defined by great wealth. Sotheby's takes you inside Chatsworth House, the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Discover the passion that has driven 16 generations of the Cavendish family to create one of the world's most extraordinary art collections. The old master drawing collection here is what Chatsworth is best known for, and Leder and the Swan is perhaps a sort of flagship of that collection. It's something which identifies Chatsworth to the old masters and Chatsworth to Leonardo. This is one of these episodes from mythology where Zeus appeared to ladies in the form of an animal in order to worm his way into their affection. The babies being born out of the eggs on the ground beside them are the product of being embraced by this swan. This gave rise to the twins Castor and Pollux and future Helen of Troy and Clytemnestra. So quite, a, quite an interesting cast of characters. I'm fascinated by the fact that Leder and the Swan is still here because in 1938 there was a big exhibition of Leonardo's drawings in Milan and my grandfather was asked if he would lend the Leonardo and he was very reluctant to do so because he knew the war was coming and that Italy was a dangerous place to send things to. But the king said that he was going to send his the selection they wanted. So my grandfather sent his drawings to Milan and then the war did start and the drawings were still in Milan. The war went on. In 1946, 1947, they came back again. And there is a little bit of damage in the middle of our Leonardo, a little white spot. But it's sort of, in a way, a badge of honor for lending the thing. It was the first three Dukes of Devonshire who formed this great collection of old master drawings. The second Duke was perhaps the most important one because he collected the old master drawings, which are over 3,000 still in the collection. And he had a very good eye, he had very good agents, he was competitive, and so that was a good intellectual base for the collection. In 1724, the second Duke of Devonshire pulled off quite a coup. He acquired the collection of Nicholas Flink, ahead of the greatest drawings collector of the day, Pierre Croza. Croza wrote a rather wonderful letter we have in the archives here, doubtless bitter for having missed this great jewel of a collection. He wrote very graciously to compliment the Duke on his great acquisition. If you want to get to the real heart of the creative process, you have to go first and foremost to an artist's drawings. Drawing is so much of the essence of, uh, of things in art. People can sense a kind of directness. Every artist looks back at what went before, whether to do something different or to learn and benefit from what earlier artists did. Contemporary artists, when they come here, always want to see the old master drawings, and they are thrilled beyond words to see that. I think old master drawings are a very interesting way to start collecting because first of all they're relatively affordable, secondly they're massively stimulating because every time you look at a drawing you understand something different about where and when it was made. I'm very proud that we have a drawing by Leonardo in the collection. To have one good example of his work adds luster to the rest.